What's up everybody, Parker here. I have an awesome video today showing you how to effectively show your old data versus your new data in a scatter chart. Uh, what I mean by this is I wanna be able to show or visualize the decay of data over time. So for example, we have this scatter chart here and as I step through each month's data, we see that it kind of fades away. So uh, our newest data point is a dark blue. And as we're going through time, we see that our old data points will fade away to kind of a, a transparent or white. Um, so this is a really cool functionality and allows you to effectively visualize, hey, this is stale data compared to this is my more recent data. I should probably uh, put more weight into this data. So for example, I have some dummy uh, survey data. This is kind of based off of the uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant when they uh, rank all of the business intelligence tools. Uh, so they have a completeness of vision here on the x-axis, an ability to execute uh, on the y-axis. So my data is basically just kind of uh, mirroring that. So in the top right is better. So we can see that kind of later with our darker dots, we are showing that we are doing a little bit better than we were previously with those lighter dots. So we're gonna put more weight into those dots. So uh, this is a really cool trick. I'm gonna show you how to set up kind of an easy version and a more involved version that will take a little bit longer, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, also, if you like um, if you like these tricks in blog form, make sure you check out the BI Elite blog. The link will be down in the description for this post. And uh, let's go ahead and get into this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to another file where we can build this all out. So all I have right now is my data loaded in and a basic scatter plot. So to take a look at the data, we can see the survey data. We have an index, which is basically uh, going to act as our ordering. We have our x-axis completeness of vision, our y-axis ability to execute, and then we have the survey date, which is basically just the first of the month. Uh, and to visualize that better, we'll just make that uh, look like month and year. So basically we just have one data point per month. Uh, so there we go. So I simply took our x-axis and y-axis, threw those in, and used our index as the details so we can get every individual data point. And then from there, the easy way to visualize uh, the decay of data over time statically is with just the built-in uh, custom, uh, built-in conditional formatting. So you can do that by going to data colors and then our three ellipses here, conditional formatting. And we can just use the built-in uh, color scale using some of our index, so our ID column. And you can set up any uh, color you want here I think maybe just a gray to black would make sense. And then you click OK and you can easily set up um, basically just a static view. But unfortunately this isn't going to allow us to step through the data and also I like the ability to be able to see like, hey, um, during this month this was the most recent so this should be the darkest but then as time goes on it kind of fades away. So that's what we're gonna set up in this part um, of the example. So building off of this, uh, we're gonna go ahead and import the play axis slicer. So I've actually already imported it here, but if you need to, go to import from marketplace, uh, search for play axis, and you'll see that play axis dynamic slicer, import that into your file, and we're going to add it down below. So we'll just throw this in here. Cool, and we'll take our index field and if you click play, we'll see what happens here. We're only gonna be able to see one data point at a time because it's stepping through uh, each individual data point. So it makes sense that it's only gonna be able to show one at a time. This is basically just like a normal slicer at this point. It's a slicer for a single data point. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up a uh, second uh, copy of this original table with no relationship set up. So we can easily do that by adding new table from the modeling ribbon. I'm just gonna call it copy and set it equal to data, which is our other table. So that is effectively going to create a copy of our first table. So we have our copy table and we have our data table. They look exactly the same, except for a little bit of formatting. I'm gonna format that survey date again, just so uh, it's gonna be consistent. And great, we can see that there are no relationships set up between those tables, just like we like it. So if we change out our, uh, use the index from our copy table inside of the play axis slicer. So now we'll see that this won't affect anything, which is exactly how we want it right now. 
Uh, so instead of using uh, the values that we are using in the scatter chart, we're actually going to swap out the y-axis for a custom measure that we're going to write. So in order to do this, we're going to create a new measure on our original data table. I'm going to call this ability to execute uh, measure. And we are going to create a couple of variables. We are going to create our what's called our scatter index. And that's simply our index from our original table. So this is the index from our scatter chart. Then we create our play axis index, which is simply our index from our play axis uh, table, or our play axis slicer. And then we just need to return an if statement, basically saying if our scatter index is less than or equal to our play axis index, return the sum of ability to execute from our original table, else return blank. So if you follow that, that should make some sense. If not, basically, uh, imagine we have our 30 data points here, and let's say, just for this example, let's put our uh, play axis slicer on, let's say, the number five, and we'll pause it there. So when this is five, we want to show all the data points from our data table um, that have the index of one through five, so five or less. So that's what we've done with our measure. So basically, if play axis is five, we want to be able to show all of the data points in our scatter chart with indices from one to five. Um, so that's pretty easy to do. And then once we have that finished, we can take our y axis, remove the ability to execute, and instead use our new measure. And there we go. It looks the same for now, but now we can click our play button and step through, starting at six, seven, Let's just start that over so it makes a lot of sense. So we'll start over at one, we can see how it starts over. And that's looking awesome. Uh, that also brings up another point. We see that our y-axis and x-axis are changing dynamically depending on our data. Uh, let's go ahead and set those to be constant because it makes a little bit more sense. So the scale is from zero to 100 in both directions. Now let's step through that real quick again. So you see that stepping through the data and plotting an individual data point, which is awesome, but you also see that our conditional formatting doesn't necessarily do the job here because it's actually taking the whole scale of that color scale and plotting them. But I wanna be able to see that like at that current month of the data point that's plotting, I want it to show a dark black. I want it to show like the actual, um, like it was the newest data point at that time. So quickly, I'm going to uh, simply throw in our month from our copy table, our survey date, just to uh, help understand what is showing in our visual here. So we can easily see, hey, so I'm looking at you know, this current month when I'm stepping through the, uh, the slicer here. Okay, so last thing, actually I'm going to format this real quick. Okay, cool. So last thing we actually have to do is we need to create one more measure for the coloring, the actual custom conditional formatting. And the way we do that is we're gonna create a new measure. I'm simply gonna call this color. And actually we are going to grab the code from the other measure as a starting point. Throw this in there. Let's get rid of the return. So we actually only need the variables. So we wanna get the ratio of the scatter index to the play, uh, play axis index. So if we take our, um, we'll, we'll call this um, transparency. So simply we will take the uh, ratio between the two. So we'll divide our scatter index by our play axis index. So for example, if our play axis index is 10 and our scatter index is four, we get 0.4 and then we'll multiply it by 100 to get something between uh, one and 100. And then simply, let's go ahead and return a hex code. So this is going to define our color. Let's return a hex code. Um, and let's return blue, which is 0000FF. And let's append our transparency. So we'll format the transparency to turn it into a text string. 
and give it a custom format with numbers and click OK. So we will change our conditional formatting in our data colors to use a field value now, which is our color measure, and click OK. And there we go, that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, I see one error, so I see that there is a uh, black point on our last point, which is our index 30 point. So we're gonna have to fix that, but we see it, it's pretty cool. It shows us uh, basically that color scale over time. So we go back to our color and we actually need to return an if statement again. So basically if our scatter index equals our play axis index, so our value is the largest of our selection, let's just return blue. Otherwise, we are going to return what we had typed out here. So basically we are appending that transparency uh, the transparency two digits to the end of the color. So it's basically going to be blue and maybe let's say 40. So that'll give us 60% transparency. It's the inverse of, you know, 100 minus 40 gives us 60% transparency. And that's what's going to drive those colors in the visual. So let's click OK. Uh, click OK. And now we are done actually. We can step through our data. So let's click our play button. And we can now see once we click play, we can now see a step through and see that our most recent data point is the dark blue and everything else fades to a lighter blue as time goes on, which is really, really cool to see. So it's all going to be kind of a ratio. So if you have a lot of points, you'll have, you know, basically all colors of the scale. But if you only have a, co a couple of points, you'll see that, you know, you'll have very distinct differences between those, uh, those transparencies. So I hope you like this video. This adds a lot of functionality to your reports. It makes it really dynamic, um, basically being able to see the old data versus the new data. Again, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check out the BI Elite blog. I've been posting there a lot lately, uh, and I'll continue to update that in the future. And I will see you in the next video.